we should be running. I have got Ozzy on the long range today. She's had a few days off. I had to go do a clinic. I think his body sort of needed the rest. And I decided to not saddle him up today. I'm going to do a session on the long reins, uh, walk and trot for an hour. <clears throat> I'm just letting him walk a little bit uh, since he's had a few days off, but I wanted you to see how the trot's coming along. I went ahead and put his bridle in, even though I'm just doing the long reins today. I put his snaffle bridle in. I've been able to stand still on the circle, which is a more precise circle, controlling the rotation and the engagement. Um, but I have not, he's still working it out, <coughs> excuse me, on this size circle. So I haven't made it any smaller yet, especially for the trot work. So let's see how he does. I haven't needed the whip. Like I said, he's had a few days off but he's been offering, <coughs> excuse me, offering to trot longer and longer. So I'm just gonna show you 10 minutes of the trot work this way. And then I'll show you 10 minutes of the trot work the other way. And then I'll probably work him on smaller circles. Ooh, he's a bit stiff. I'll probably work him on smaller circles at the walk for the rest of the time. About 10 minutes each way of trot is what we've been doing before I rode him. He looks a little bit off, so if he looks more lame in the next five minutes or so, that could just be from having a few days off, stiffness through the hocks, Oh, cough it out. There we go. If he has an issue, <coughs> instead of looking better after about five minutes of trot, if he is a little off, it'll get worse in five minutes. So I'm not going to panic when I see him off because of those hawks. <clears throat> Since he's had three days off to rest, I figured coming back, walk and trot today would be a gentler way to get him back in work, let him kind of warm up. You can see how the trot's coming along. I've got more lengthening through the neck. He doesn't root quite as bad when I have him on the long reins in the snaffle compared to when I'm riding him. Yeah, he definitely can use a little groundwork session today to get back in action. But you can see he's not starting off with the rushing and the slamming on the brakes. He's at least going from trot to walk. Trot. I'm not needing the whip in my hand anymore to get him to trot, but it still takes kind of a big movement of the rain to get him back into trot. And I really like the trot for him because he seems, usually he's a little more forward than this. But the trot seems easier for him to make the changes to his balance than the walk. Riding him at the walk has sort of been the most challenging, and it's probably just the weight bearing. Come on. But the trot warm up, what I did last week, he seems to be stopping every time I talk out loud because I'm not usually talking when I'm working. There we go. So 
because I forgot what I was saying. Oh, and there, as soon as I talk, he stops again. And I've been really, I let him break to the walk, but I've been asking for the trot right away and not letting him walk much in between each trot. And what that typically does is they realize pretty quickly that it takes more energy to make the transition than it does to find a nice controlled rhythm in the trot. So I still don't push him to keep the trot. He can break as often as he likes, but it's gonna cost him more calories. It's gonna be harder work for both of us. So this is more where we left off last week. Oh, that's what I was saying. Um, all last week, <coughs> I split the time. I found he did much better under saddle if I gave him at least 10 minutes of trot each way before I rode. And like I said, he was holding the trot longer and longer, which tells me he's getting more comfortable in it. And he's starting to develop a bit of a better rhythm. A Little bit of a slow start today, a bit more stopping than he was doing last week and pretty stiff but he looks like he's starting to warm up out of whatever that little bad step was trot trot So I let him break to the walk, but only a few strides, and then request the trot again. And that quickness doesn't make him feel wrong for breaking to trot, but it's more work to keep breaking walk and go right back to trot. Oh, I might even need that whip today. But let's see how he does. So that's about five minutes already. And he doesn't look like he's bobbing his head and getting worse. So I am going to assume after a few days off, he's a bit stiff <coughs> and maybe not feeling so great through those hawks. And I also, without the saddle on today, wanted you to see how his body's looking. Because <clears throat> he's released a lot of tension, which makes him look like he's put on a lot of weight. And he's really starting to get some muscle on the hindquarter, which also makes him look like he's put on a lot of weight. And I did feed him pretty good the first week or two he was here, but he put on weight, the actual weight weight so fast He's not, I had to cut his food back a little. So he's on less food now as he's looking fatter and fatter. But I'm really pleased with the shininess of the coat, the appearance of extra weight. Sometimes it's not just calories or supplements. It's a release of tension through his body. He's still pretty tight through the back, the hindquarters and the neck. But that's part of the reason I'm pushing him to trot for at least 10 minutes each way before I ride. I find that the trot work is easier for him. He releases more muscle tightness working in the trot as a warm up than he does even the walk on the long reins. Oh, I just got one more minute. Then we'll change direction. Trot. And I sort of assumed I didn't need the little dressage whip today to get him going, but apparently I should have. But you can see if I only let, I still let him break to the walk, but only a few strides before I push him back to the trot. 
He's holding the trot longer and longer and finding the changes in the trot that we're looking for and figuring out what his unique rhythm is as well as he gains more control. And that's starting to look a lot better. Mm, one more. Try it. There we go. That's starting to look a little bit more like what I was getting last week. You can see the bounce coming into the trot little by little, the suspension getting better. But it's a good day to work on the long reins with him because definitely these first 10 minutes after three days off, he started off a little bit worse than where we left off, but not bad. You can see the progress overall that he's making with his trot. And like I said, finding his rhythm, lengthening the neck, not pulling and rooting so much, even in the bit. So what I'm going to do today is the big circle at the trot, 10 minutes. That was 10 minutes to the right, which is his harder direction. Then I'll change direction. We'll do 10 minutes to the, of the trot to the left. And then that's all I'm going to put on the video today. So after we do that, <coughs> I'll probably do... 10 minutes each way walking on the smaller circles today and then go back to the bigger circles for the last 20 minutes and do more walk trot transitions but I won't push him to back into the trot quite as fast I'll let him break a little bit more <coughs> the last 20 minutes of the session compared to the first 20 minutes of the session Trot. Good boy. So him volunteering to hold the trot is what tells me he's finding more and more comfort in the trot, even though he's still adjusting his neck position a lot. Uh, the rhythm is getting more consistent. It's not too slow, not too fast, and he's just changing. I can feel through the reins. He's starting to control the levelness through the back and the pelvis, which is what's keeping the hind legs working a little bit better. So like I said, this is his easier direction. So you can see he's choosing to maintain the trot. Once he breaks to the walk, my job is just to get him back in the trot and then once he's trotting, I'm working with that inside rein, adjusting the outside rein. Trot. And trying to get him level on a precise circle if I make the circle, this is about as small as I've been able to make the circle so far and have him start to choose to maintain the trot. So this precise circle, it's as big as I can make it on the long reins and it's about as small as he can do right now and choose to maintain the trot. So. I don't want to go any bigger than I have to because I want to keep encouraging those hind legs to work and stay underneath. But if I go any smaller than this, which I experimented with once or twice last week, I can't get this kind of forward. He just won't. He won't choose to maintain the trot, which tells me it's too hard, right? Too hard yet. So I came back onto the bigger circles because using those transitions is basically working with the law of inertia. So it's going to work because it costs more calories to him, more energy to keep breaking to the walk and going back to the trot. So I don't have to make him trot. I just have to 
decide what my timing is on sending him back to trot after he walks. So a couple of strides and then right back to trot sort of sends him the message that I would rather he trot than walk. And he did that a lot at first until he started to figure out maybe if I stay in trot, it's less work than going walk, trot, walk, trot, walk, trot, which it is. For the same reason, you get better fuel efficiency on the highway than you do the city. Yeah, and so as he's put more effort, decided for himself, maintaining the trot is easier, then we can work on the balance in the trot, right? If he doesn't choose to maintain the trot, it just tells me he's not comfortable either on that size circle or he's not comfortable in the trot or he doesn't feel stable in the trot, right? So all of those errors are just him giving me information about what he feels inside his body not right or wrong, good or bad. But if I can find a place like this where he really starts to maintain the trot. And even though he didn't show it today on the video, he was maintaining the trot to the right, more like this that you're seeing to the left this past week. And like I said, I just kept it about 10 minutes each way. <coughs> and we're already at six minutes this way. Um, and then I would get on and ride. So I was doing this in the bridle with the saddle and then getting on and riding afterwards. And I found he did much better. Uh, he was much more comfortable making the changes I wanted at the walk under saddle if I did 10 minutes of trot each way on the long reins before I rode. So I've experimented with not doing groundwork and getting on him, doing only groundwork, doing groundwork as a warm up doing mostly groundwork with short rides <coughs> and last week what ended up working really well and made some progress was just 20 minutes of groundwork and a 40 minute ride so the rides longer than the groundwork but if I skipped the trot time for 20 minutes he rooted a lot more he pulled a lot more he struggled a lot more under saddle so I thought today what I'll show you, because I'm just going to give him a groundwork day, and then tomorrow I'm going to give him a groundwork warm-up and ride. So I will videotape that for you. I'll videotape the riding part for you tomorrow. And where we left off on the riding videos <coughs> was me playing with the idea of resisting that rooting and pulling on the reins with just one rein or by using a halt transition. The very next ride, I completely gave that up. So I'll show you tomorrow. But I think for him, <coughs> it's just that's going to be the last part of his balance to change. A couple more minutes. He struggles to use, and they have to use a lot more control to balance at the walk, <coughs> which is more muscle energy at the walk than they do the trot. So tomorrow I'm gonna try to pick up on the walk work under saddle, same figure eight. I completely gave up any rain resistance. It just seemed to be a distraction and was not helping him make the changes through the back and hind quarter as easily is when I just let him do what he wants with his head. Um, and then <coughs> this coming week, I may play with some trot under saddle because the trot in general seems to be easier for him. But with a rider on board, that could be different. So I'm pretty happy with how the trot's coming along on the long reins. Work in progress, but you can start to see it shaping up. The work under saddle at the walk is shaping up, but you can't really see the result yet. <clears throat> and so it's a good enough trot, and he's a pretty naturally forward-going horse. So it may be the trot 
<coughs> is what I need under saddle and then the walk after that. I've been a little shy about playing with that under saddle just because the x-rays of his hawk and the vet exam, I wanted to err on the side of caution. But I think for him, the balance in the walk is going to be the harder speed compared to the trot. So this week, I'm going to take the video, start off with the same thing I've been doing, but this is just an update. So I haven't really changed what I'm doing with the trot work on the big circle on the long reins or the little circle at the walk. And I really haven't changed at all what I've been showing you under saddle uh, in the riding videos. So I will do that tomorrow and just show you where he's at. And then if I end up making some changes to the riding, so that's 10 minutes this way. He's pretty much right on the money. If I end up playing with trot under saddle, um, or canter on the ground or make any other changes, I will video the first session of that. So I may have today's video, tomorrow's video. I just want to update you on what we've been working on. But at next week at some point, I may change what we're doing under saddle and I will videotape that. Or I may change what we're doing on the ground and I will videotape that. So that's the update for today. That's a, certainly a long enough video. They take forever to upload. <clears throat> so I'm just going to give them 10 minutes of walk each way on this smaller circle. And then the final part that I'll do today is back on the big circle, walk and trot, but I won't make him trot quite as much. I'll kind of split it up between walk and trot a little bit at the end. And there's the kitty cat. And Ozzy is so careful. The cat doesn't move. All right. See you later.